with a man, or he's right now with a man who says that William Shatner is his father. Hey. Uh, good morning. Good morning to you. Peter Sloan, thanks so much for, uh, for being with us. I greatly appreciate it. Um, Thank you for inviting me. Uh, we, we want to hear the story, and I think a lot of people across the country want to hear it as well. You filed a lawsuit against William Shatner. I want to kind of take back, I want to kind of go back a little bit. Your story is very long, and I don't have a whole lot of time. Um, but you met your mother, uh, your actual mother, uh, back in the 80s. What did that conversation go? How did that go? Originally, I met my mother in Toronto, 1984. I was introduced to her by a, a well-known actress at the time who helped me in my search. And uh, it wasn't until weeks after meeting her and getting to know her a little bit that uh, she told me my father's William Shatner. You had a chance to talk to William Shatner for a long time. How did that discussion go? What happened? Eventually, I got to talk to William Shatner. My first adoptive father, who was primary in the search and was the head writer for ABC News 2020, uh, he contacted the manager of William Shatner once this thing came out. And uh, they initially said, tell the boy to come out to L.A., you know, referring to me. Um, but that was kind of put on the shelf. And then eventually I did fly out to California at the behest of Art Keen, who was a director at that point, who wanted to introduce me to my father on the set of T.J. Hooker. And that's where I met him for the first time in 1984. When you finally had a chance to meet him face to face, what did he say? How'd that conversation go? Well, it wasn't to, until the end of the uh, shooting, uh, the day shooting, that uh, he exited the sound stage and went toward his trailer and I followed and I said Mr. Shatner I'm Peter Sloan and he turned around and he said you're the one and pointed his finger at me what did I, that mean I'm not he sure knew? oh yeah I, there's no question he knew because you know my father George Orrick had contacted his manager there was no question there was dialogue I mean even at the time uh, you know when he was alerted they did talk to my mother I mean Larry Thompson talked to my mother at, at length what happened at that point when he said that? At the point at which uh, they interviewed my mother afterward, they just let it go. They... No, but when he said, you're the one, what happened at that point? I said, look, I, I came 2,000 miles to see you. I'd really like to talk to you about this. And he said, come on. And he invited me into his trailer. We had a two-hour discussion. I know you can't talk about a lot that was discussed really. there. but One of the things that, that he did do was to acknowledge that I was his son. What did he say? He said, what, what can I do for you? I, do you want me to introduce you to the casting directors? And I, I said, no. I said, I, I just want to hold my father in my arms. And, uh, you know, this is like an hour into the conversation, and we were both kind of emotional at that point. I started to cry. He cried. He lifted me up and held me in his arms. And, you know, at that point, we started talking about the future, and I said, I just, I don't know what to ask you except to say that I'd like to you know, continue and have a, have a relationship, get to know you. Get I don't know, know you dad. at all. Right. And he said, okay, well, come next week to one of our location shoots in, uh, in L.A. And I did. I spent the day with him the following week. I flew back to New Jersey, and uh, I had his home phone number, called him a week later, and uh, he basically got very, I don't know, kind of reserved and... Uh, he said, I can't, I can't deal with this. I can't handle this right now. And then he hung up. And I got a call days later from somebody, Mr. Brody, who basically suggested that uh, he, on behalf of Mr. Shatner, he was apologizing for the behavior, for hanging up, but that there was no way that they could acknowledge me publicly. It would be devastating for me and Mr. Shatner for whatever reason. I don't know. When was that? That was 1984. There's November been, of 1984. So there's been almost 20 years, if not around. Yeah, I, I let it go. At that point, I mean, there was, I felt like Why there was now, nothing then? left to do. Well, it wasn't until 2011 when my daughter, who at the time was 14, wanted to meet him. And uh, Because you had told her that William Shatner was well, my grandfather. Children, my children knew this story. They I mean, I, they, okay. Yeah, and they, uh, my older children met my mother. So, I mean, it was, a, right. it was common knowledge. I mean, she said as much. Uh, my mother was... Great friends with James Doohan. I got a surprise call from Jimmy Doohan, uh, Scotty from Star Trek one day. And uh, he met with me and we had dinner and, you know, talked about the whole mm -hmm. thing. But it was common knowledge. 
I'm running out of time. I yep. wish I had more time, but I need to ask you about the lawsuit. It's a right. hundred and seventy dollar, uh, hundred and seventy million dollar lawsuit. Right. Um, you're also demanding that he take a, a DNA test. Yes, I am. Um, why the money? People who are watching this are thinking right away this guy just wants the cash. What do you say to those people? Well, if I'd asked for one hundred and seventy dollars, that wouldn't have gotten much attention. So, so you asked for big money because you know that would bring I, the media attention I, with it. I'm tired of being called a liar publicly. It's that simple. And there's a pattern of behavior that started last year after Paul Guzzo of the Tampa Tribune wrote an article about me, very extensive, by the way, and uh, his handlers, his manager, and his uh, publicity agent started to make some comments that were slanderous, including some of his uh, internet uh, handlers, you know, his manager. Hmm. So they're part of the lawsuit as well. Bring out of time. We're going to continue this interview uh, coming up t today uh, of Fox 13 News at noon. I'm sure they have a lot more coming up at five and six as well. But I got to tell you, it is absolutely fascinating. He did an interview with Mike Couch on the uh, uh, radio a little while ago, and that was a 45 minute interview. And it really was captivating from beginning to end because it kind of you need to hear the beginning to kind of uh, get to the end of it to understand where he's coming from. But again, we'll continue following it right here on Fox 13. Back to you. I'll say this before we. I know. I know this has gone on way too long for TV purposes. I, but I knew. No, I have no, to ask you one question. From the producer too. I Go have, ahead. And I tell <laughs> okay. Marie, I'm sorry, but I have to ask you one question. Has he not heard okay. from William Shatner since 1984? Uh, so Russell Rhodes, our anchor, wants to know: Have you not heard from William Shatner since 1984? I heard from William Shatner in 2011 uh, because an article came out in the Sarasota Herald Tribune. Mm about me uh, being part of a board of directors of a local company. Mm -hmm. And uh, the objection was the picture of myself, my daughter Anne, and my father was taken from my website and posted on the Herald Tribune. And they objected to using my father's image. That's how it started, basically. Okay. But did you, have a, did you, did you actually speak with him? No. Okay. I okay. did not yeah. speak with him. Okay. 2011, okay. this is, this is uh, basically after the Comic-Con you know, event that I took my daughter to to meet him. To meet him. Okay. Yeah. Got it. All right. Thanks very much for your time. Russell, back to you. All right. I'll see you. Thank you.